And our next reader, his second go around. Let's give a warm round of applause for Doug Kibber. I wanted to say maybe Dorothy from Kansas was right. Maybe everything we need is in our backyard. I was going to do a piece about Missouri State Fair, but then Walter went all bovine on us, so now I've got to do one about a, about a mule. <laughs> you have to prove it in the show me state. We're not a bunch of fools, and yes, we are quite well known as the state with the glorious mules. Now, a mule is a special hybrid. That's a cross of a jack and a mare with different number of chromosomes that keeps their nursery bare. Mules, the first man-made hybrid respected and a royal mount. From Egypt to Mesopotamia, they were prized by all account. Their strength, stamina, and endurance made them king of the earth, and even in ancient times, they were 10 times a horse's worth. In war, they were invaluable through 3,000 years of fight. The symbol of our army and in combat showed their might. The Union North had a million mules as valuable as a cannon or gun. The South had half as many, which is why the blue side won. <laughs> the mule today is a unique critter and the symbol of the Missouri state and just might be the finest beast that you never ate. <laughs> Missouri has been a proud producer of top mule flesh you will find, but they sure are different from any horse in body, shape, and mind. They're a proud part of our history throughout our statehood life, and I thought we'd better have one, so I sought one for my wife. I found a sorrel in Kentucky, shook hands, and a deal was made. So I got Carlos for my wife. Some said that's a right fair trade. <laughs> now, Con wanted to start out right. She signed up for the Mule Jones Mule School to understand the way they think and find out which will rule. Turns out Carlos is a gem of a find. Sometimes you just don't know. Takes some time to sort him out, but looks like he's good to go. He's a Jim Dandy mule, all right, from his long ears to his tail. So keep a lookout soon for Carlos and Connie on the trail. Next piece is a little piece of audience participation because poets and poetry can be sly and tricky and stealth and surreptitious. And they sneak into our minds and our psyche without even knowing why and somehow how it, the placement gets there. So there's a poem that most of us have heard 20 or 30 times in our life, but sometimes it's hard to know how it snuck in. So I'm going to read this short little piece. So uh, shout out if you recognize where this comes from. Breathe deep the gathering gloom. Watch lights fade from every room. <laughs> Bedsitter people look back and lament another day's useless energy spent. Impassioned lovers wrestle as one. Lonely man cries for love and has none. New mother picks up and suckles her some. Senior citizens wish they were young. Cold-hearted orb that rules the night removes the colors from our sight. Red is gray and yellow white but we decide which is right and which is an illusion. There is a British band inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame called the Moody Blues. Their signature song is Nice in a White Satin. And they go along in a little interlude and one of the band members reads that poem. And it's like, we've heard it dozens and dozens of times. You go, where did it come from? And you go, there it is. I call it sly subliminal poetry. <laughs> <laughs> 